Paddy Power, sponsors of the Road to Cheltenham. Hello everyone, welcome to the Road to Cheltenham, day three wrap for the 2024 Cheltenham Festival. Something a little bit different today, no winner for Willie Mullins. Oh, what's gone wrong? Gone at the game. Man may get his finger out. <laughs> <laughs> but someone's coming up hard on the rails, Dan Skelton. Great. Doubled his tally today. And great to watch and, you know, different races. Waited uh, or bided his time with where he was going to go with Grey Downing before deciding to run him today. Drop and protect, protect her out back in trip. And yeah, two handicap winners yesterday, two grade one winners today. And good to watch. Yeah, it was really good to watch. You were certain that this was the right race for Grey Dawning. I wasn't quite so sold on it, but you were clearly absolutely right. The horse had learned plenty. I wish I remembered that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's definitely true. The horse had clearly learned plenty from coming around here before, making that critical mistake to out. He's jumping this time around. He's not as quick and nimble as Ginny's Destiny, but he's so solid. Yeah, I'd say the slow ground helped him, mm. definitely. I'd say like, he is potentially a trip horse, there's no yes. doubt about that, but the slow ground definitely helped him. And um, Yeah, he was good, Ginny's Destiny. Tried his heart out too. You couldn't knock him. Fasa Vega blew out uh, worse than ever before. But I just thought Great Awning was tough. Harry rode him for stamina. Went at Harry Cobden very early and yes. made it a test. Yes, and funny enough, having jumped so well all the way round, Ginny's Destiny, Harry needed second two out, didn't? And Ginny's Destiny wasn't there. wasn't there. No, but I think you're right as well. Had the ground been a bit quicker, Ginny's Destiny just would have been able to get away from his fences yeah. and set more of a task for Great Awning. I do. And looking at December, even. Genie's destiny was always able to stretch great awning in the air, whereas today he couldn't. Yeah. Um, so we're probably going to see them on divergent paths, don't you think, as they move into into open company? Yeah, I'd imagine one is going to go up and one is going to stay in, at the intermediate. Mm. That's what I, I would think, but yes. sure. Well, so I've spoken to, to Dan and Harry Skelton and they're talking about working backwards from the Gold Cup. It's Gold Cup horses that they want. Absolutely. Now, they had a horse that ran twice for them in the Gold Cup. Uh, he finished third and then fifth. And this year, they campaigned in differently. That horse is Protectorat. They've campaigned in competitively all season. We've seen him in handicaps. We've seen him in graded races. And today, he loved the Ryanair. Yeah, and it was the first time he switched off. Like, he looked at him in Newbury in the Den Man. You were thinking... You are a Ryanair horse, fall mm. over, let him stride along. But in fairness, stage star and a high senior win the decent gallop on the ground. Protector had switched off behind him in the box seat, jumped like a buck. Uh, Envoy Allen followed him. What I love from Harry Skelton was when he jumped through on the inside of a high senior when he went right. He sat beside yes. Harry Cobden. Yes. He didn't press Harry Cobden, he just sat beside him and he waited for the horses behind to come and push him forward. It wasn't something he's always done, but it was always great to watch it and great to see him do it. Yeah, I thought it was a sublime ride. And I mean, that thing that you're touching on there, Dan Skelton touched upon in an interview as well. He said that he thinks that, that Harry is riding with that bit more patience. He's seen it a lot this season and particularly confidence. this week. Confidence, you're right. Well, I mean, confident to be patient. Yeah. And it's just, just when you're thinking, and what is confidence? I'm not really sure, but when you're positive and thinking positively, it gives you confidence. Well, things roll. I mean, there's, there's a reason. You make good decisions when things are going right, yeah. I think, don't you? Those you know, split-second decisions that jockeys have to make. Yeah. And yeah. He, he got them right, and it was it was good. He waited, and I thought Rachel gave Envoy Allen a great ride, produced him at the right time, but Harry had kept a bit, so when she came, he was able to go with her. Yeah, and he got an absolute flyer on the last one, protector. Yeah. Rachel was saying that she just sort of felt that she was just on the edge the whole time, and you know, you know how deceptive she is as a yeah, rider. I, I thought she might have had more left than I the horse had. I thought a little bit, but... I'd say on the ground, yeah. I was always kind of thinking, oh, she'd be closer if she could be. Yeah, OK. Uh, the other great one of the day, of course, was the Paddy Power Stayers Hurdle. And finally, Gordon Elliott and Jack Kennedy were in the winner's enclosure with the horse that they'd plotted right from the Hatton's Grace, Chupu, to win the Stayers Hurdle, go two better than last Yeah, year. and nail the colours to the mast. I wasn't so sure. Like, you knew he was the best horse, but you were thinking, he has to be a better horse than he was last year to win. Obviously, he's a year older mm. and being fresher really suited him. And it was a... It was a tactical enough race. Yeah. They didn't go mad. Keith got in, got in the front end after a while and Florian Porter, and he didn't come in early. But Jack got out and got himself in the right position. And even though while he, he went to Keith Donahue and Florian Porter early in the straight, he didn't commit until he was up near the last. Mm -hmm. And he got a good jump. And the way he went to the line, Lydia, you hate saying it about horses, but he does look like one that could win a couple of these. Yeah, I, of these. I, I agree with you. I, I think that's spot on. Um, Brian Atchison from Rob Paul, the owners, was saying, I'll come back hopefully this time next year. It was a crawl. And I think that that, I mean, I don't know how you beat Chupu in many ways, because I think he does stay this the trip well, particularly now he's the age he is. Also, he's got that turn of foot that we saw in the Hatton's Yeah, well. he's a great, he ha, that's 
he's the pace for two and a half and he has the stamina for this. Yeah. I, I'm not sure if he went really hard, if he went really hard, I'm not sure you could, how he'd beat him. And then Florian Porter, the dual previous winner, ran really well, went down ran on his blinder. shield. Yeah, great call at home by the lead with a pair of blinkers. Yes. It was completely rejuvenated. Yes, and but he won after being yes. set up very well over Christmas. Yeah. Ran really well in four. Yeah, he franked last year's uh, Martin Pipe form, Oroco probably needed the run. I wouldn't give up with him yet. He looked good in the paddock actually yeah. in terms of well being. Yeah. I thought he, look, he looked really good. Uh, the veterans in the stayers hurdle didn't really make much impact, and afterwards Emma Lavelle and Andrew Gemmel made the decision to retire Paisley Park. So, one of the cult heroes, one of the horses that people who follow jump racing have loved for so many seasons, has bowed out. Yeah, and look what a great horse he was. I mean, what the fun that they had with him and the fun that he gave a lot of race scores too. Wonderful horse, great to see him bow out in one beat. I hate that, but yeah, he had a great career. Yeah, he did, and but you're right. I mean, it's good to see him being able to bow out and enjoy, enjoy retirement with whatever they decide to do with him. Uh, the grade two Ryanair Dawn Run didn't go to Ireland, which is how everybody expected it to go, particularly when Dysart Enos uh, was lame this morning. Poor Fergal O'Brien, it's such a shame not to see that horse here. Everyone was bright the days ahead. Jade de Grugy, in the end, it was Golden Ace, Lorcan Williams and Jeremy Scott. Yeah, exactly, but it was a funny one. It was a, That was a tactical race too. Yes. And I think the fastest horse won. Yeah, yeah. And I, Brighter Days Ahead was just over racing, wasn't she? Yeah, it was. It was tactical. It was, And that's what you get. But like, I thought Lorcan Williams gave, gave her a great ride. Brilliant for Jeremy Scott as well. But I did read it somewhere last week, I think. Did I? The connections or, or Jeremy. They, they really believed in her. Oh, yeah. They had a big time, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah and, and why not? Dasha Drasher had done them proud in the, in the previous race, but, yeah, she was good, and that's the second win of the festival for Lorcan Williams. His first coming, of course, when amateurs weren't allowed to ride in the Fox Hunters, and he that's rode right, Forlock yeah. Bay. Yes, yes, I wouldn't have got that if I was here for a long time. <laughs> well, I had to look it up. I'm going right, to be completely right. honest. Jack Kennedy still believes in brighter days ahead. Yeah, I, I would think so, too, yeah. Definitely dropping down in trip and then lack of pay, lack of a pay, lack of a strong gallop. Yeah. Definitely was the undoing of her. Yeah, okay. So um, I should have mentioned about Protectorat, of course, the owners. Jed Mason, Sir Alex Ferguson, John Hales and Lisa Hales, because they had a double here today. First festival winners for Alex Ferguson as well. Mon Miral set them up for Protectorat with that win in the Per Temps. First time headgear, Harry Cobden on board for Paul Nichols. This is a horse that was a grade one winning hurdler as a juvenile. He was, and it completely lost his way. I think it was John Hales might have said it after that he's not a chaser, he hated fences. He looked slow here in the Paddy Power mm -hmm. uh, back in November, but he was rejuvenated. Thought he got a wonderful ride. Yeah, 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 he did. He did, didn't he? And interestingly, Freddie Gingle had um, said last time, actually, I think you need to put a pair of blinkers on him. So yeah. Harry went in and thanked him for that. Yeah, as well. and he was a fair play, but I, I thought he gave him a wonderful ride. Took his time, patient. Um, lost an iron at the last and even had the confidence to put his hand down and put his foot back in and then go over winning the rest. Yeah. Uh, it was a, a football themed Thursday because Harry Redknapp was in the winners enclosure after the Trusted Trader plate, plate with Shake Em Up Harry for Ben Pauling and Ben Jones, the first festival winner for Ben Jones yeah. and for Harry Redknapp. Jumped like a book, mm. an absolute book. Pinged the last two fences when he needed them. Got a bit lonely in front end, wandered a bit left, no, a bit right, um, but great win. But positively ridden, always in a good position, and jumped. Yeah, those were the Ben Pauling tactics. His fourth festival win for him. His team has been in great form, just missed out, and the Ultima Twig was second. But he said to Ben Jones, I'd like you, if you find yourself in front turning for home, I'd like you to be positive from that point onwards. I bet it was a lonely hill. I'd say from the back of the last, but anyway, look, he, it was the two jumps he got. Yeah. And, you know, you can, it is jump racing, but the jumps were the key. Great for Ben Jones. Two Cheltenham winners he's had now on this course earlier in the season, and now his first festival success as well. And we ended today with a sixth festival success for Derek O'Connor on board. I know the way you're thinking for Gavin Cromwell. And I was joking with Derek. You know, on um, when you watch form, you can either choose to watch the whole race or just the closing stages. Yes. The two things would tell very, very different stories, wouldn't they? Yeah, would. I would. I think he dropped him out, took his time. I wasn't sure. He didn't halfway. mean to. He didn't mean to drop him out. He wanted to go forward. He got him lined up on the inside to go forward. And at the first fence, the horse jumped slow, big, and right. And he went from the inside of the track to the middle of the track. I didn't watch the first. Good job you were watching. <laughs> um, but I didn't think a halfway. I was thinking, I'm not so sure. Yeah. I'm not so sure. Yeah. But then all of a sudden, when he got to the fourth last, you're thinking, Derek is fairly confident on this. Yeah, he said it took him a, a mile for the horse to get the horse to get his confidence, and yeah. then he started picking them off one by one. He said he loves riding like that. Yeah. He, you know, he can sort of feel it coming. You know. Yeah, they're coming back to me. They're coming back to me. But uh, 
Yeah, he looked well. Looks well in off 145 now. Oh, oh, good. Well, I mean, he looked quite well in going yeah, yeah. off 145. I wasn't sure he'd stay. I wasn't sure he'd no stamina or no form at the trip, so no point in after speaking. I wasn't sure he'd stay. First run of the week for Gavin Cornwell, who's seen Florian Porter run so well in second in the stayers hurdle. Could it be three out of three for Derek O'Connor? With it's on the Online. line. It'd be some week if it is. Would be, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. Incredible. That would that would be a fantastic story as well to, to wrap things up. But that's all for tomorrow. This is the end of the day three wrap here with the Road to Cheltenham. Paddy Power, sponsors of the Road to Cheltenham. Watch live racing now on Racing TV. Don't call.